are. Okay, welcome to the In Between with Carrie and and Alex. <laughs> welcome everyone. We're so grateful to be on the Stay Up Network on YouTube, and where the motto is "You, you give, give." So thanks for I joining us today. There's more use and more gives. I think. I think it's you, 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 you. Um, we are the in between, and this is a show where we like to talk with people that we've met in our lives that seem to have some kind of positive energy in their life that seems to carry through. And we want to ask them how they do that. What's the in between? In between the moments of not knowing and during moments of anxiety or stress or creativity or success, how do people navigate lives? And today, Alex and I both know our guests. We have two guests, which is a first for our show. We have Harold Zwart and Vesh Rudzwart. And they are, I'm gonna briefly say a little bit about what they do, but that's not what this show is about. This show is really about who they are and how they got to be such wonderful people. So Harold is a director and producer and he has, uh, can be, there's films he's recently done, Twelfth Man, um, Going Back a Ways, The Karate Kid, Angel Cody Banks, um, a bunch of other movies, The Mortal Instrument, City of Bones, but he also, and he splits his time between Norway and Hollywood, and we're talking to them in Norway right now, and it's nighttime in Norway, so that's why all the sunshine is there. How wonderful is that? And Vesh, Vesh Lemoy, who we call Vesh, she's also a producer on many of the projects that she's worked on with Harold, as well as her own project. She's also been a writer. She's got some documentaries, Women in White, and a biopic, Amundsen, which just released last year. And Alex and I, know them both because we had maybe the best week of our lives maybe no maybe <laughs> pretty <laughs> close hands down i think so touring norway on a musical film version it was just a, an abbreviated version of a musical film that harold's been working on harold and besh called seance based on a true story near where they are right now that happened that involves psychics and embezzlement and murder and a bunch of other fun things and it's just beautiful music so we toured with them and during that week we were felt so uplifted and so um, accepted and part of this family that they created. They created an amazing culture in this touring group in Norway. And so when we started this show, we thought we have to talk to them about how they stay so positive. So we're gonna get to know a little bit about your childhood and then ask you a bunch of questions and find out how you navigate the in-between. So mm -hmm. Alex, you wanna start? Sure. Um, thank you all so much for joining, being our first international guests. Um, so Pleasure. I'd like to ask both of you, uh, but I'll start with Vash. Like, could you just give us a, a general overview of like what your, what was the structure of your childhood, your family life, your. Yeah. Uh, nice that you want to start there because it is the foundation of everything, isn't it? You know what? Uh, my childhood started off with a father who was an entrepreneur and he was gone most of the time. Actually, my mom will laugh of the story that I called him the man when he came through our door. So that's how distant he was in the beginning. But then uh, our family hit a crisis when I was about um, 11 maybe 10, yeah. And my father lost everything that he had built up. And I will be very blunt and say that that was a very tough time in our, up, or in our family. But that aside, or that was a very integral part of everyday life, actually, if we could, what we could rescue, you know, we had to sell everything. We were just like scrambling and um, my father was always happy that we had dinner on the table. So every day he would thank my mom and say, thank you, Anne, for putting dinner on the table. And we were like, really? Is that such a big deal? But he had experienced Second World War. So had my mom, although she was a child then. But still, that simple thing of having food on the table was good enough to call it a good day. And it taught me a lot that you survive on love, food, and if you can sleep at night, you know what? You got all the elements to start the next day. 
So soon enough, we got out of it. Um, uh, my father uh, would never recover in a way, but we learned to live with him as he was. And I was very grateful when I met Harold, who accepted my dad for who he was. He was not the guy who used he used to be, but Harold saw the twinkle in his eye and they really, he, Harold managed to make my father laugh for the first time in years. And that was like, okay, he's <laughs> the guy. <laughs> it was such a jolly feeling wow. to get oh, Harold cool. in the house. And yeah, that was uh, that was my childhood and youth, I guess. Cool. How about you, Harold? Well, what about you your actually, uh, well, I had um, uh, I grew up here. Actually, I, my summers were always in this house. This is my grandfather's house, which he bought after the Second World War. He was also in the war, uh, and. Uh, and he, uh, my mom passed away after five year disease when I was 12, which shaped me pretty much. But I think she gave me enough uh, encouragement and love to, to survive that. And I have, have a great brother who helped me and my dad, who was a, a composer and, an, uh, and a doctor, also uh, gave me all the encouragement I needed. Uh, and he was also very good at uh, being both the mom and the dad. So anything that had to do with household work I think yeah, I learned from him uh, but my mom was an amazing woman we have lots of pictures of her in there um, and uh, when I was the, some of the stories here actually she was she loved this place more than anything uh, so we've tried to preserve it Besh have built another little place next to it here which is in honor of my granddad and, and my mom and um, she adored this place so we've always tried to uh, maintain it it's an old house from 1870 so it's a lot of work and I remember when I was here alone with my granddad I was only I think I was 13 and my mom had just passed away and my granddad was an old sailor a captain very strict he woke me up seven in the morning and said get up you can start painting right away <laughs> and um, and I had to so I actually took a ladder at 13, I went all the way up there <laughs> on my own. He wanted that little yes. spot, if you, could, if you could show again. Yeah, yeah, all the way up. He wanted very to high go up. all the way up to this yes, little spot. Yes, I had to pay. <laughs> and, and then he, and I had to put the ladder myself, and it was a double ladder, one of those that you extend, super heavy. And um, I remember after I, I had to walk down, I was done with the section, I moved the ladder over, moved it up and then my granddad came around the corner and he noticed a little spot and said, you missed the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and it made me go down, move the ladder back. So he was a very tough, tough man. But he was, um, he was a wonderful guy, a lot of humor. And I mean, everybody through my life has taught me lessons and he always taught me you have to pay for yourself. Don't borrow, and borrow money, you can't pay back and hard, you know, all that stuff. But I was also very lucky to, to meet Vesh uh, right after my stu studies. And I've, I've never met a more positive, energetic, <laughs> wonderful person my whole life. So I felt like I was a ship lost at sea. And then I found the harbor who, who made me calm and, and focused. And we've worked together now for 30 years, I think. And uh, we've had an He's amazing- He's not so journey. sure about the harbor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am. Absolutely. That's the one thing I'm sure of. So I think uh, a good uh, a good marriage is is the key to our success, at least, and our happiness. Mm. Oh, well, that we're kind to one another, mostly. I mean, we argue as hell too, but yeah. not not to hurt each other, but to defend ourselves <laughs> and yeah. to show respect. I think if you're together with a partner who who wants to take you down, I mean, run, don't stay. I think that is the most damaging you can do to yourself is to be, be together with someone who, who needs to take you down or, or have that urge inside. Because, and particularly when you hit tough times, you can sense the strength in a relationship if, they're a real support 
if they lift your eyes and say, no, 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 forget about today. Look over there, you know, mm -hmm. let's aim for that one. That's just such a blessing. And then I don't think there's anything you can't face, really. Yeah, but you it have is food on the table, you have a bed to sleep in. And love. And love, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's really interesting. And we've tried. Sounds and and in and this Corona time has been really wonderful because we've had our kids at home all the time. And they're they're now out swimming, they're roaming the island here. There's an island with no cars and they have all their friends around here, so they're very safe. But during the corona time, we had one rule, and that was you have to either, uh, what was it, uh, earn something, learn something, or create something. Because it's so easy to, to just sleep in and just do nothing. But either you earn or learn or create. If you go to bed and you've done one of those three things, then your day has been good. Because my dad actually, I mean, we're rambling on here, but <laughs> my dad taught me, my dad taught me that the, and he was a he was a victim from the concentration camps. That's another big story. But he was a, during the war. He was in the Indonesian concentration camps because Indonesia was a Dutch colony. But he taught me that the British soldier during the First World War, they were in the mud and in the ditches. But every morning they got up and they shaved and they put on a tie for your own dignity. And then you know hmm. that's if you just have a purpose every day. You earn, learn, or create something. Then then you know you can survive many things i think sorry next question <laughs> well, actually we yeah. make our job Show's easier done. and harder because yes, we're the show's done. Over. so the keys are incredible love what you see in each other is what you also have in yourselves it's really clear that you see in each other that support and love that you both radiate to each other and having a purpose is really cool we want to that's great so we'll talk more about that but going back a little bit to childhood i'd love to hear a story from each of you maybe about a moment that you did something pretty young that has something to do with what you're doing now like a, a story like michael you know michael my husband was building sand cat towns in sandboxes and then he became an architect so mm. is there a story or a moment or something that kind of was a premonitious moment about what you'd be doing as an adult for either one of you you start. Well, I remember a couple of things. You were uh, always listening to your dad on the yes, phone. Yes, I, I would actually sit under the desk of my dad's home office. He had, a, he had an office because he had to work from home as well. And since I spent so little time with him, I would sneak underneath his desk and just sit there and listen to the conversations we, he had with a lot of people and often it was about problem solving and trying to find solutions and i remember how sort of struck i was like god all these problems <laughs> like ha huh, maybe that is what grown up life is about is trying to solve problems and as a producer <laughs> i can for sure tell you that if you're not okay with you know getting fires on your desk or or solving issues or or solving situations don't become a producer because that's really what your job is about uh, it's also about creating and and creating the possibilities for things to happen and and that's lovely when things are on track and it's hunky dory for a little while the 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 train is rolling, but then you know that it won't take long before it's a stop or a halt or a rail, off rail or something. So that, I think, just to listen to him, how he would break things apart and trying to rebuild around a different solution definitely taught me to mm. uh, structure problem solving in a fairly good manner can can i ask yeah. you can you remember some time early on where you realized you were applying that where you were solving a problem or you were creating something I, yeah um you do it pretty much every that day. was early on <laughs> you know what i think maybe when my mom and dad had started um to change some things in the house to accommodate and we couldn't really afford having 
people there to do it for us. Um, we were like, okay, <laughs> can we do it? And we did. And uh, I guess, you know, that was a very satisfactory feeling that, oh, the first time I started a chainsaw to cut down trees. <laughs> That was also one of those moments where like, I thought I would never ever touch a chainsaw, but I had seen my uncle do it. I knew you had to have all the equipment, the gear. I knew you had to cut in on an angle and was like, could I do it? And wow. uh, me and my sister, we, we were woodworkers for two weeks. How old were you? Eight best or nine. of our lives, yeah. How old were you? Nah, that was in my twenties. Okay, 26, seven. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Harold? Is there a, a, a moment in your life where directing that sort of stuff became well? Obvious? I've done I've done chainsaws too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made a sculpture yeah, of one a, of the trees. <laughs> I, yeah, I have a sculpture in the back here of Venus of Milo in chainsaw art. Uh, but we've also <laughs> accidentally torn down some power cables here. That's right. Yeah, that shouldn't <laughs> be online. This should be. <laughs> <laughs> the secret is love, purpose, and chainsaws. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Don't well, try tools, it at home. The tools right tools is, is half, half the, the job. job. Yes. That's the saying we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I think that um, I, I was always interested in films. I always, I borrowed my granddad's Super 8 camera. One of the things, I was always looking for ways to, to make things move and and animate things. And I remember in school, we had, you had that probably too. You had, we got milk in school mm. and you had these little- um, Cartons. Car well, there, yeah, you, you bought a carton with uh, tickets. So there were like 50 tickets stacked on top of each other, like lottery tickets. And they were stapled in one end and then you tore one off, <laughs> right? And then you got a little carton of milk. Now mm. the end that remained where the staple was, was very short little, pieces of paper that if you went like this you know you could animate so everybody in my class gave me those and I made a little animation stick animation so they could sit there and flip flip books I think you call them right flip books, yeah. yeah so I, I made flip books for everyone uh, out of their the, the remaining stub of their milk uh, mm -hmm. my first uh, enterprise as a director <laughs> <laughs> The first visual storytelling. Yeah. Hmm. And it could be a, a stick figure diving off a board into a lake. It could be a bird flying and hitting something. You know, all these little, very short little. They were always immensely. something nice. Yeah. Always something with violence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Amazing. Alex, do you have any more childhood stuff before we go on to? Um, I am curious. Like, how did your childhoods inform how you parent? Okay, great question. Mm. I had a couple of sort of, well, first of all, love was number one. I knew that rescued us and, you know, and then trust. Yeah. My parents gave me so Mine much Mine too, trust. yes. Yeah. I never had to sort of, you know, I had cr friends with crazy parents who would have to show, for example, that they had blood on the sanitary pad because otherwise they would freak out and think that they were pregnant. You know, <laughs> oh, stupid things like that. Or That's um, quite extreme, but... But it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that, but... I would never have to say where where I had been or they would never sort of come here, smell let me smell your breath or I was just I was very conscious of the trust that was given and I also knew that you know my father was quite ill so I couldn't be that wild but they allowed me still to be exploring and that I loved and then I had a few <laughs> incidents where my mom would sort of really <laughs> in her conservative mind that was like and I remember being embarrassed or, you know, it would be if we played some sexual games or silly things like that. And they would sort of be 
surprised that we would do that. But in my world, it was just supernatural. And I knew that when my kids grew up, I would not arrest sanction, them or yeah. call on them or sanction natural game or natural play or I was just like and I've actually talked to my mom about it later and said that you remember those episodes like I could have been damaged for life <laughs> you should be so happy that you know I I uh, am able to love and receive love and she agrees she said oh if I had only known in my sort of conservative upbringing this was what we were taught to, you know, to raise children. And I think we both agree today that that's not a good thing. Let the, let kids be free and let, and let trust, us explore. Trust them. Yeah, I, you show them, you can trust them. Yeah, they will and embrace that. good sides of humanity. Yeah. So, yeah, that was very conscientious yeah. for me. Wow. What? Yeah, I, no, go ahead, Harold. No, I also had a lot of trust and um just because you were on the subject i my dad uh my parents were both doctors and my dad was an is it ob is that a, yeah, uh, an obstetrician. Obstetrician. yeah yeah so um we were a bunch of kids going to our log cabin my mom and dad were there and kids are curious and they ask questions so my dad drew the whole thing up he says here's the vagina <laughs> and we're like five or six years old we're like, oh, really? And, and then I remember we were all, and it was like a, a Disney movie. I remember I, I have it like a, it was yesterday. There were seven or eight kids in this little cabin, all in bunk beds. And my mom was sitting in the middle. And um, and uh, my, I remember my mom talked about the blah, blah, blah. And then one of the girls asked, is it is it good? Does it make you feel good? And then my mom was totally right. She said, well, if you take your time, I just remember that they were just hand holding us through the. Wow. And yeah, it was just such a. But I, I had a wonderfully liberal, great parents, and and same thing with my dad. Here's our son. Huh? <laughs> Hello, son. <laughs> hey, hey. He dares to come back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I think that what you were saying, the of course the endless pool of love and never being judgmental or. Or as little um, as possible. I yes. guess there's some judgment you can't escape because it belongs to your upbringing. But to evaluate where you are in your time and and really be honest about the mistakes that's been done and sort of let's not do that anymore. Let's move on and, yeah, and not find... not sanction. I think exactly. is also just uh, everybody can make yeah. a mistake. My dad used to say a donkey will make a mistake. No, everybody can make a mistake once. A donkey makes it twice. Oh, that was unfair. <laughs> Talk about being judgmental. <laughs> no, but if you, you got to learn from <laughs> her. I, I think the donkey would wildly protest. Uh, That's true. It's not fair to the donkey. No. That's true. No cruelty was done to donkeys for this program. Uh, <laughs> so if, if there was three things that you could make sure, if your kids listen to every word you said, and I don't know if they do, you'd be, or miracle parents, if they take all your advice. But if you could give them like three pieces of advice, what, what would you want your kids to have to go out into the world with? Think before you do something. Mm. Always think through the consequences because you could spontaneously do so many silly Maybe things. Be spontaneous. Yes, but just but that, let's, that where can second. this go? Yes, that split second when something terrible can happen that you could have prevented. That's one thing. Be honest. I mean, every situation where you try to escape something difficult with not being honest will catch backfire. up with you and backfire so just stand your ground and take the cold showers but be honest because no one can really arrest you or blame you for being honest i mean it is your alibi it is your card to just be say things as they are we promise them never to be angry if they're honest yeah that was like if you call that card like okay i'm gonna be honest then we have promised that we cannot ever be angry get angry at them because they dared to be honest with us and we have to be able to face that together and mm. make every day into something 
I mean, you have days off too, but yeah, learn, I think they would learn, disagree with you. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah that <laughs> right. <laughs> Learn, learn, or create. That's going to be yeah. the mantra. I love okay. that. That's really mm. cool. Cool. Um, should we move on to our, let's go on. So now we're in your adult lives. And again, it's not so much what you do, but how you do it. What kind of philosophies, you kind of talked about it already, but it may come out differently when we apply it to our lives now. This is a time, obviously, where there's a lot, we're in conflict a lot. And then there's a lot of emptiness because of COVID. There's a whole lot of things going on. What value system or spiritual belief or whatever, how do you sustain underneath all that? What, what, how do you talk to yourself through it? I know how you talk to each other through it, but what's, what's, mm. how, what sustains you? That's basically the question. I think, uh, should I start? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, this COVID thing was wonderful because it, it, the whole world stopped. And I've been telling myself for years Get off that, if, yeah. But get off that, get off that. Uh, what do you call that hamster in that wheel thing? Mm -hmm. You know that you, you feel the treadmill. Get off the treadmill. treadmill. Or the... You feel like, especially in our business, that crazy chase all the time for the next and the this and the that and the, the success and you want this and and then everything stops and you and I've always been telling myself, listen, don't worry about it. You have food on the table. You have love. Mm -hmm. You have the most wonderful kids in the world. You have a you know, wonderful, is, that's what life is. And still I find myself struggling to live in the moment because I'm always looking forward, always, there's something that has to happen before I'm allowing myself to feel good about things or anything. And then this COVID thing happens and it's a full stop for everyone. And all of a sudden I go, here they are, here's my kids. <laughs> yes, it was really, really wonderful. And I, I started relaxing with, with that um, hamster wheel and, and things lost, some things just lost their meaning a little bit, which was good for me. And I really appreciated that. So I just had to sort course. of wake up a little bit, I think. And it comes with, the f I mean, it's not easy if you have barely enough to yeah. see the end of the week it's and you know there's no say, yeah. but i the, it's i don't know i've been notoriously accused of being looking on the bright side and i guess that can be a pain in the neck but i'm put together that way it is the eye of the beholder what so okay so i can't do this i can't have that but I can breathe, I can go for a walk, I can just take a breather and try to enjoy other aspects that I actually haven't had time to enjoy because we've been professionals. I like 70% of our time, we are so stuck up on being professionals in, in why, one way or another. And yes, we have to earn a living, but there's also plenty of food in the cupboard from, I mean, all the canned food that we haven't touched. This was the time to open the can of something and start there and like, okay, beans. Yeah, Norwegians, we barely use beans, but it was like, huh, this is gonna be interesting. You can make something just, of that. Yeah, I'm just, do other things mm. and and it was i mean i could not help but think that it was nature correcting us yeah it was i've always learned to listen to the signs in nature because they would kill you if you didn't it's as simple as that so if you're not giving your allowing yourself to stop and listen what this is to what this is about what it's telling us you miss a very valuable moment and we need to change direction and in this i think covid in the united states also gave us time to rediscover all the mistakes that has been going on for generations and we are continuing the old you know systems and wheels and and now we had time to react to it. We had time to protest. We had time to say, no, this is not 
continuing. And I just think, what a moment, what a valuable moment to stop what we were doing and reevaluate. Mm. I, I think having said that too, we, we must acknowledge that it was easier for some people than for other people. And, um, and we also saw the incredible struggle. Having doctors in my family myself, you know the risks everybody were taking just so we could stay safe at home. So yeah. we do acknowledge that it was, we were lucky that we could continue. Yeah, other just, people went to war. Yeah, they really exactly. Did. And uh, we really appreciate that because we could just continue writing and having conference calls and we could continue our work in one way or another. But um, it wasn't that easy for everyone. We realized that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we worked together. Uh, I, I'm so encouraged by your, your creating value out of this time. And mm -hmm. I'm curious how you would articulate how this is going to inform your future. Exactly. Like what is your vision having this time of self-reflection and this family time to what, what is your future going to look like? Or another way to say that is how will you emerge from this? What, how do you, how do you, what, who will you be when you come out of this ideally from what mm -hmm. you've from it? That's exactly where I was going, Alex, that's perfect. Uh, I'm gonna fight even harder for democracy being our way of organizing our society. I am so grateful for everyone who got together and worked together to find solutions to people's immediate needs and and just really honor when people do that and i'm gonna actually i have to say that 2020 started with us losing a very dear friend of us mm -hmm. who was a master in giving other people compliments he would never ever talk about himself he would always take you and lift you up hold you up in front of others it was so uncomfortable sometimes but he did that <laughs> notoriously and he gave compliments like nobody else and i was like when he passed that was the stick the baton the, yeah, the baton, medley or yeah. what you call it that i was left with was like continue to give people compliments and let's talk each other up and not down Hmm. that's going to be my coming out of COVID <laughs> and quarantine. I'm going to make sure that I talk people up hmm. because they deserve it. Yeah, I agree completely. I think the one of the things that really struck me during these COVID times was, was how quick the kids were at adapting and how incredibly the, the, the teachers were adapting so quickly and you could sense that they felt it was so important for them to maintain the education for the kids and um, I think they're hugely undervalued and I remember some days when our kids were a little frustrated you know they did this and they did that and and we told them listen they they've never been in this situation before no. it's incredible what they did and in in two weeks our kids had their lessons they had all the stuff they needed hmm. I just I just think it showed an incredible adaptability yeah and i think it was a healthy cleanup in our industry and hopefully many other industries mm -hmm. and i agree with you you have to come out of it looking at talking people up and just encouraging and noticing all the people who were actually making it mm -hmm. great for everyone else the teachers the health workers mm -hmm. you know all those people who are like an invisible force out there who really came out and were the heroes this time yeah, but also those who managed to actually stay home and and fight against so many sort of natural urges in us to cut their hair. Ma who managed to be, <laughs> <laughs> but who managed to be kind and uh, you know to other people. I mean, I just I admire uh, it was a, it the, was the qualities great... that come out in times of crisis. I. I love to see that come into play. Yeah, for, for a while there, it, it seemed like the whole world was collaborating. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, like and, one big orchestra. Yeah, and mm -hmm. now it doesn't really anymore. But uh, there was a moment there where I thought, oh, this is beautiful. This is mm -hmm. really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everybody's working In, together on yeah, this. Yeah.
because it is How? one little tiny planet. Yeah. Do you think uh, this changes the way you're going to tell stories moving forward? I'm not sure. Y'all are great um, storytellers, and I've always been encouraged by the <laughs> stories that you tell. So it's I'm, I'm very curious. boring. If everyone's I'm not leaving you in there. Important. <laughs> it's a. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if um, I haven't really uh, the stories we have. I haven't really been able to apply the knowledge. Maybe there's on some subliminal level, a um, some somehow more taking your time to dwell on things. I don't know. It's it's hard to apply that now. I'm sure I've learned something, and you've learned something too. And uh, uh -huh. but I hope it's a wild world out there with lots of stories. And you know, if everyone tunes in on. Um, heartfelt important i mean it's gonna yeah. be slightly boring maybe <laughs> so i hope there's a conglomerate or whatever that word is of free imagination yeah and yes. and, and post uh, post modern in yeah. a whole new way i i hope it's just gonna be crazy wild and good and a mix of everything yeah yeah it's interesting because um working with you all just for a week um you did encourage everybody and you did find the value in everybody. That's what I probably felt more than anything is that everybody there felt valued. Everybody yeah. contributed something. Even, you know, my family came with me. We're suddenly in it feeling like they were contributing. So yeah. I can't wait to see that on steroids. You're already doing that. And you're coming out of this wanting to do that even more. It's amazing because it's not so much, it's what the story you tell, you know, the heart and the story you tell, but it's how you tell it and the culture you create around you to tell that story. And you mm. both seem to do that even for each other. You keep complimenting each other. You keep complimenting the world. It's so easy to focus on he who shall not be named, the, the, the things that are negative right now, but yet to really compliment the good things so they get stronger is, is a really great way uh. to go. So it's wonderful yeah. knowing that you already do this and you, to, to do it even more is really exciting for the world, I think, for sure. Goodness. It can be such an amazing world and we can't give up on it here and now. I mean, yeah. in many ways, it's better than ever. And We did I see think... clear skies for a moment there, which was amazing. Yeah. You saw clear waters in Venice. Birds. You saw birds yeah. chirping, yes. Goodness. Yeah, it was like a little... Here snapshot of what it could be you know yeah i mean we're also hi hypocritical because we are not all electric and green ourselves but uh right. we pretend but we are <laughs> you can't you can't save the world alone that's no. for sure and uh yeah norway produces oil yeah. and we are ransacking our own soul in many ways and if it hadn't been for the greta thunbergs and the those who actually say, hey, this is not okay. We, you know, we go on in patterns that can, ex it's a, a perpendicular yeah. machine, sort of. It's just self-sustained, but in the wrong direction. So this is a unique moment uh, of like tap, 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 stop. Yeah. Let's restart and rethink and do things hopefully different. What's something that um, both of you individually do that gives you joy? That's your guilty pleasure thing that you do, that you know, if I do this, I'm going to feel happy. It's going to lift me up. Oh, God. And it doesn't have to be guilty. It doesn't have to be guilty. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was ready to share my guilty pleasure. But I have, I have actually asked for, you know how you can ask for AAA discounts in California these days? Yeah. Or but since long, since the 60s or 50s or whatever, you, you've been able to ask for triple A discount. I have lately been asked for double A discounts, anonymous alcoholics discounts, if they exist. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. I'll admit, we, I have been drinking uh, more wine than usual <laughs> with such pleasure that I've started to ask for anonymous alcoholics discounts. And mostly I get it. <laughs> you do? That's yeah. Try. 
I wouldn't share that in an AA meeting. Hey guys, you can go and get alcohol <laughs> really cheap. <laughs> People are very sympathetic. See, see, Besh enjoys her, uh, her wine, and I stopped drinking almost 30 years ago when I was a student. I just didn't like it. So I always ask for the non alcoholic beer. Yeah, that's And right. I'm, I should say the non alcohol beer because yeah. they all go, oh, really? <laughs> trying to. <laughs> trying to cut down, are we? <laughs> it's funny. We go out to dinner, and, and the order is glass of wine and a coca-cola or a beer mostly when it's beer wine yeah, they yeah. they generally figure out but mostly when it's a beer and a coca-cola she always gets the coca-cola and i always get the beer yeah what is that i look so innocent <laughs> <laughs> you're a man and man <laughs> it makes no sense to me that's why i love it all right, so you both, you both like to, those are the things you like to drink. Is there any activity that you love doing that you just love doing? Actually, Vesh yeah. bought, uh, I'll go and get them. You can talk about it. Oh, really? Yeah, the bad oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Yay. this has been a, a guilty pleasure. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, so I'll wait with that one. Uh, another thing that I've been doing is, oh, cleaning out closets that i have been like avoiding like the plague <laughs> or tidying up the bookshelf with all those books that you carried with you from like high school with uh your body in puberty what happens like do we need this book anymore <laughs> i guess not pimples yeah, nah, but... we don't need a book on pimples let's here's our guilty pleasure yeah <gasps> Bad Bad <man. laughs> <laughs> yes, but they light up. Yeah. At what? night? Yeah, Vesh found them. There, you can get them on eBay. They're amazing. Yeah. Oh, and wow. we've been playing in the oh, middle of the fun. night when it's dark because our kids love playing badminton and we love it. So you have these. Uh -huh. So you go out in the middle of the night and you can still play badminton. So middle of the night for you is like three in the morning. I mean, right now yeah, you're... They, not, they don't work we, here. We, we, we have they to work wait in, till, in L.A., yes. We have to wait till <laughs> August yeah. to play it here because... It's not gonna it's, make a difference. It's quarter to ten here in Norway, and the sun has still not gone down. Wow, it didn't get the demo. Sun is, you see? Sun is still yeah, up. There it is. Yeah. And uh, so it'll be another, I mean, it doesn't really get dark. It just goes a little down and then it goes up again. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Yep, but All that's right, I, been a good one. Yeah. What else have we done? I've Mostly this. <laughs> cleaning out closets, yeah. uh, which, is a, which is a three-day work. If yeah. you empty your bookshelf completely, you have to live with that mess for uh, some days. Yeah, I it's mean, a big commitment. It's unavoidable. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's, it's a good feeling when you're out of it. Oh. You have room for new stuff. New useless books. New useless books. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm? Sorry, Sorry, go on. I was going to ask you, since I'm trying to cook more uh, in this period, uh, and I'm awful at it, so what was the best thing you made out of those beans? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, tortillas with um, with uh, pulled chicken and uh, cilantro and lime. Um, Mexican, obviously, with the beans. Vesh is an yeah. amazing chef. Yes, no. I'm yes, not. you're, you're it's really good. You no, no, it's other... it's really, really yeah, good. Right. Well, and, and I've eaten at some best. fancy restaurants, and and then one one day, it was almost as if uh, my kids and I were taking it a little bit for granted. She always made food, and then she said, "Done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not going to cook anymore. I'm sick of it. Sick Who... of it. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> Nobody takes the initiative. And then." You know, like when men were asked to do dishes, we invented the dishwasher, right? right? So I ordered Blue Apron. Mm. Uh, it changed my life. Yes. So now I can, I, I'm really useless. You can make something good. I actually beans. can make something good. Mm -hmm. So, and it's always one child with me or they together is always the children a part of it and now we just cook and you see the kids go kuck, 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 and then it's the it's <laughs> been so much fun and then we serve Vesh she gets I get it I get a plate that looks like nothing I've ever seen before and okay. it's so 
I mean, it's like Christmas Eve for me because I'm not used to this. <laughs> That's like so Mother's Day every day. It's like Groundhog yeah. Day for Mother's Day. That's incredible. That is so like yeah. a father, a you get to appreciate the, oh. the dinner, and, the table. But those are those are great solutions. Those meal in boxes thing where yeah. mostly things are measured up and yeah. those are amazing. But That's then cool. you know how everybody started to bake bread in this yeah. time? Yeah. Sourdough. What? So our good friend who is a sourdough expert, she came with this precious little chunk of goo <laughs> that was like, oh, this is the heart of civilization <laughs> and preserve it with utmost care. And we were like, oh, it took it, us two it, days to kill that thing. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that, we're not. That, that's now the world knows you killed it. Um, yeah. So here's a question: If you were a dog, what would you chase? Oh, I would chase leaf blowers. I hate leaf yes, blowers. You would. <laughs> you would be attacking those leaf blowers like crazy. I okay. think those leaf blowers are the curse of our society. It's uh it, they just blow up dust that lands in somebody's lungs or somewhere in wherever. And the noise is just, and it's every day there's somewhere. Yeah. I would chase leaf blowers. Excellent. I would chase <laughs> other dogs that I could play with. <laughs> gotcha. You can't chase other dogs. Yeah, you said no. I would, yeah, no. Female dogs then. Whatever. No. Yeah. <laughs> Of course I would. I, I would. You're not allowed to chase other male dogs. If I was a dog, I would chase other dogs to see if we could play. Of course. Hmm. <laughs> what else? I'm glad you're not a dog. There to do? Okay, <laughs> moving away from the dog thing. Woo, that got tense. That was the biggest fight I've seen from these two. <laughs> so you're, you're writing an autobiography, your life together. What's the title? Oh God! Oh, uh, every day different. Every day different. And who plays you both in the movie? Oh, who can be anybody you? in time and space? Liv Ullman plays me. Right. Yeah, and it's my turn to be Liv Ullman. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old Norwegian joke, by the way. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, now it's your turn to be Lee Bullman. It's no, you. It's a long story, but it's very funny for Norwegians. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I think every day is different. That's what I experienced with Vesh. Every day is different. That's great. That's great. Yeah. What's a What's a gem from Norway that that you all have both gotten from your culture that you kind of that that you could if you could export it into. <laughs> American culture to the US. What, what's, what's part of Norway that you all bring to the world? No, that's the, that's don't sleep away the summer nights. That's nature is the biggest ecstasy. You do not need anything. That, You've always said that uh, equality is well, an export. Yeah, uh, if we're getting Norwegian yeah, political right. about it, yes. Yeah, let's be serious. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I love the the level of equality that this society has reached. Huh. Uh, it feels leveled in so many arenas. Then again, we're not at the finish line, but it's uh, the playing field is getting leveled, and it's a joy to move around as a woman and as a man or anyone who has been jeopardized because of some stupid pre-setting i think we'll feel like norway has uh, done some ransacking some soul searching yeah and come a little further <coughs> but i also see that in the united states and then yeah. there's this huge sort of undercurrent of something that is so sad to discover and when you do it you see that that's the under under river that carries so much so but you can only look forward and and know that we've done some there's been taken some important steps to uncover and remind and just say let's 
draw a line and start again mm. here. Yeah, but equality, super important. No think, one can uh, live a happy life without feeling equal to others. I think there's lots of good values to bring from Norway, but I think what I love about America, which is not so much Norway, is America is a yes country. That's yeah. what I fell in love with in America. It's a place where people go, yes, let's yeah. try. It. Yes, yeah. we can try that. And then if it goes to shits, that's fine. Yeah. But at least, but here in Norway, they're always like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, why do you want to do that? No. Well, so it, that's a little, just not to paint this country just rosy. Yeah. There's a little bit of a set. You should not be different. And, you know, success is not really awarded or rewarded. So I love America for the spirit, mm. and I still adore America for that. Mm. And I think it's there uh, to, you know, I, I think it's so there, and we just need to bring out that spirit again and, and do things uh, that yeah. makes people happy. A yes country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. It's simple, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've solved it. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we're getting close to the end of time. Is there anything that you want to leave us with or people with um, that we haven't asked you about this part of how you navigate your lives or anything else that you want us to know? There's one thing I want to say, and it's going to be my final word. Um, like you guys reached out to us to talk about things that matter and things that are palpable in sort of in in ways that doesn't cost money or you don't have to be rich or you this is the weave of your life to surround yourself with people like you guys who will talk you up who will see how we can take another step and meet the next day. That's where it, that's all you need really. And, and they will make your day good and, and worth living. And, and maybe even you can call it a happy day, but that's, that's what it's about. Surround yourself with good forces, good human souls that will, you know, take you along and and make you see that journey ahead i second that <laughs> that was beautiful well you all are incredibly you know your good forces you know we again we've only had spent a week or so with you and and felt the incredible good force that you create around you and just we're so honored and lucky to have you um be available to talk to us today and to see you in this what? beautiful thank setting. you for talk to us what Thank you for wanting to talk to us. Oh, always. <laughs> we always want to talk to you, just so you know. If you ever have a moment. <laughs> I think if, it, if, you, if you replay this recording and you fast forward it, you'll see the sun just move over our faces like we were in and out of shadows yeah. as the sun was moving. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, wow. Now it's all shaded. Yeah, it's a little bit of sun up there still, but. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So, um. Thank you. We're really grateful. This is really fun. We'll send you this when it's done. And um, I guess, Alex, anything else you want to say? I just wanted to add my personal thank you. Y'all mean the world to us. And thank you so much. Pleasure. So bloody good to see you guys yeah. again. Great to <laughs> see you. Here's our cursing. Both of you. Yeah. What? After having been here a week. No, the way you were cl climbing those mountains. Yeah. As far as I can recall, uh, we were actually schlepping behind. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> so that's in reference to the fact that in the middle of this tour, Vesh gets up one morning and says, We're all going walking. And the next thing <laughs> you know, the whole group. We're, was climbing a pretty good steep trail up to a waterfall. And then Harold said, we're going swimming. And he ripped off his clothes and dove in. And everyone went, okay, that's what we're doing. We followed you all anywhere. Even one of the people in our in our group had loafers. And he climbed a mountain and rocks. And oh, says, we will follow you anywhere because of your positive energy, which is a great note to end on. Oh, so, fun. Thank we'll you. take that with the responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> we all survived. 
Thank you so much. Lots of love yeah. to you and your family. Thank you. Yeah, thank Bye. you so Bye. much. This is fun. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.